Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our TGIF and Product Owner episode this week with Anna Bengam. Hey, Anna, welcome back. Thank you, Vasco. I am grateful to be back. For sure. And uh, of course, we're going to talk, a very, uh, talk about a very important aspect of our work, which is the collaboration with the product owner and, of course, their collaboration with the team and stakeholders. So uh, we'll talk about what a great product owner looks like uh, at the end of the episode. But uh, before we go into that, do share with us, Anna, what was potentially the worst product owner and the pattern you've witnessed in your career? Wow, the worst. So I will say I've seen several things in my career, and I will I I I I wouldn't say it's the worst um, because I'm still in the career, so I'm sure that I'm giving a chance for the worst to happen eventually. But so far, what I've seen is a product owner who is heavily involved. And um, almost like micromanaging, like the second uh, tier uh, manager on the team. I have seen, I have worked with teams where the product owner was also a manager for, for, uh, for example, a business analyst, right? Um, and I, I, and I got to see how that could be a challenge, um, being on the same team and having a product owner, because you don't know when you're speaking to your manager or you're speaking to a product owner. Um, another, uh, anti-pattern that I've also seen where I, I joined a team for the, <laughs> I joined a team and then it was spring planning. The product owner was also sizing the work. Um, and my question to them was, are you also plan? So I knew exactly what was happening, but one of the things that helped me all the time is asking questions because I am new. I'm using leveraging that to my advantage there. Are you also doing the work? Oh no. Okay. That brought that awkward silence. And then they asked, um, am I not supposed to be sizing? We could talk offline, but for the Reason why I ask, it's normally because it allowed an opportunity for me to educate. The reason why I ask is because normally a product owner, if they're not doing the work, um, wouldn't be sizing the work. So I'm noticing that you are sizing the work, but it seems like something that you've been doing. However, we can talk offline if that's something you're open to, right? So one, it put me in a position to not call them out disrespectfully in front of others but to also educate with the team, right? Um, And there can be a miss there, right? Where (laughs) it's a hit or miss with Scrum Master and Product Owner interaction in the midst of the team, right? Especially when team, uh, there are some product owners that, you know, don't like to be corrected, not just some product owner, just some people in general don't like to be corrected in front of the team. So that was one situation that, you know, turn out it was it was okay but then it turned out better after the education was provided um back to the uh, situation where uh there's a the anti-pattern that i thought was the toughest i've experienced was uh essentially the product owner that was also a manager uh for some of the developers on the team um that was challenging because as mentioned earlier um when i was having a uh, time with the the team members sometimes they didn't understand when they were just being a team member or when that product owner was a product owner and a manager because some of what would happen on the team would come up in their discussion in their one on one, right? So it makes it really a very challenging uh, place for them to be in. So I had to have a conversation with the product owner and to ask to ask them, right? From a perspective, I like to get a perspective. Um, if you are on a team. Uh, and you have a product owner, like essentially tell them the role that they're playing. How would you have wanted interaction with, you know, the product owner if you were not a product owner? And they will share their sentiment. And then I just ask, 
Um, could there be any uh, way where, you know, the team members can feel, uh, could understand when you're being a product owner and when you're being a manager, right, from that standpoint? And they said, I never actually thought about it in that way. Um, I just, you know, go through with what I'm being presented, but I will be more cautious and mindful of how I am um, speaking on the team or how I am bringing conversation back to them. Right. Because I think the back to them is what made it really challenging um, because you it, it prevents that team member to just be open and be a team member. Right. Because then it's like, oh, well, and, and that's that? why they are there to be open exactly. and to share their expertise and knowledge. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, so it, it was it was a challenge. Um, but then eventually we more coaching and more observation um, that I was sharing with this particular product owner. They started being more, you know, open to, okay, well, would it be best if I'm not in the retrospective, right? Um, and then we said, we can experiment that. But we also want to be able to build an environment where they should be able to speak with or without you in there, right? Um, so we did, we got to experiment both. We still realizing that from that team members, they still needed to be more comfort, more assurance from their perspective, because they're also thinking about retention right if yeah, i say X, y, Z, am i going to be fired that's a very important exactly. question <laughs> exactly so it was an ongoing it was an ongoing you know conversation that we needed to have and just reminding them and then i eventually uh at one point had a meeting for both of them uh where i just i was leaving actually and i just wanted to appreciate how you know working there was I shared that this was the first time I've experienced this, and I appreciate the fact that I was able to work with both of them um, and, you know, just sharing how would they want to move forward as, you know, working in this relationship. Eventually, the, the team member left the team, which, you know, eventually it was it was essentially better for them after, after all. Um, but then it was just to know that there was a time where a member was not comfortable to share the ideas on the team because it will come back to them. Um, Absolutely. And we need to be aware of that. Like we are all humans, even if we may pretend or want to <laughs> pretend we are exactly. not. So I know there was a, an example of an anti-pattern, but uh, now let's turn our attention to the opposite, the mirror image of this, what might be potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with. Describe them for us. Wow. Um, the best product owner that I've worked with to this day, I'm so appreciative of him um, because he actually became a mentor of mine um, uh, in the space of me working. So I essentially joined a team um, where I came from. The team prior was okay. Um, faced some challenges, but then not this new team was a breath of fresh air. One of the things that made me stood out, that stood out from this, from that's this product owner stood out from everybody else that I've worked with was that they care. They just, nobody has ever asked me, Anna, where are you from? Like, no, I don't mean <laughs> you're from Boston. Okay, no, where are you from? Origin, right? And because he asked, it, it just opened me up to understand a little bit more about him. And throughout with uh, throughout the phase of me working with him, I realized that he's been in the organization for 27 years. So he's been around and we were just having in our one-on-one -on -one session that I normally would have with product owners um, is that he would offer a lot of his leadership. Right. And he would tell me, even talk through leadership with me and talk through people interaction with me and would share, hey, Anna, you know, provide me with feedback as well. Right. And that's sometimes something that we don't get until if the our manager <laughs> would ask of them. Right. So, for, for example, why this still stands to me to this day is um, a particular situation that was, uh, I guess, like not situation, behavior, not behavior, but um, something that I used to do, right, where I would get in front of the team, I'll ask the team for to make a decision about something, about, about like how we want to move forward. But what I have not done prior to that is provide the team with context 
or enough time and context to be able to make the decision. So he said, hey, Anna, sometimes, you know, we get in the meeting and you ask a question and nobody says anything. You know, maybe people don't know what you're asking. You know, have you considered uh, sh- sending the information ahead of time before our meeting um, to so that they get to digest it? And then when we get to the meeting, we have the conversation and then you get the outcome that you're looking for. <laughs> it was that easy, right? Um, but it, it just helped me. It, he helped me to understand as much as we try to help the product owner to be clear on their vision. We also need to have clarity in what we're asking the team. Um, And so he was really good at uh, having a clear vision of the team. Um, He was always empowering team members, um, empowering me too to take more leadership stance um, versus just, you know, going through with the flow of Scrum Mastery. Um, And also he was continuously learning, not just about, you know, me. But the team members, individual, he knew everything that was happening in the team. So when it was time for us to figure out, you know, how do we want to move forward with the team, he already have some understanding of how, you know, this is what's happening. Let's be mindful of the timing because we're in different time zones. He, he um, you know, let's ask team members their input before we're able to come and do the planning. Uh, he was very, you know, less focused on, you know, who wants to lead this. You know, I, I can be here to help, but if somebody wants to, you know, move this, drive this forward, then it was very conversational. It didn't felt like I was, it was work, but it was a good type of work. And it was a good type of relationship that I wanted to have with somebody I was work, a leader. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually another aspect that we don't very often talk about here on the podcast is that a, a product owner, because of their uh, position, because of the role and the accountabilities that are on that role, uh, they, they are also leaders and they need to step up to become leaders. And uh, when they are, it's awesome. It's great. And they can help us grow like the story you just shared. Uh, and of course, when they aren't, then a big gap is there. So helping our product owners be the leaders they need to be. And of course, also then benefiting from that is very important. That's uh, a, a great story, Anna. We're getting close to the end now, though. But uh, before we go, where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing? Where can people find more about me? Uh, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me on Clubhouse. I'm there at Scrum Master. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Scrum Master underscore champions. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find me on YouTube. I used to have a YouTube channel that has no longer, I have not been as consistent as you are with your podcast here. Um, so on YouTube as uh, Scrum Master Champions um, on there. Absolutely. We'll put the link to all of those in the show notes so that you can uh, find Anna and why not reach out and ask a few follow-up questions. I'm sure she would be happy to contribute some answers. Anna, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Thank you. No, Vasco, this was a dream come true. Uh, I am really grateful to be here and to see this come in full circle, listening to you when I just started to now being on the show, it was just like, did I manifest this in my life? (laughs) (laughs) That is, that is because, you know, that that's actually a good point. Uh, You mentioned full circle listening and then also contributing. That's one of the things we try to also focus here on the podcast, right? Like pay it forward, like bring Mm -hmm. your story, share it with the community. And uh, for those of you listening out there, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn and why not suggest, hey, I would like to be on the podcast and we'll definitely put you on the list. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast host, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. 
And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.